BMAX Audio Adventure, BGJ 365. Wait, no, not that one. The other one. Friday Recap. Friday Recap. That's what we're doing. Today's episode, we've got some old YouTube clips of Brandon with some random lessons that I found beneficial when I heard them originally. So, here they are. Today, I want to encourage you to seek failure. I want to encourage you to make mistakes because failure, error, and mistake is the learning zone. If you're trying to acquire a new skill set or get great at something that you're not currently great at, you need those failures. You need mistakes. Now, don't get me wrong. You need to refine the things that you're already good at as well. But finding new ways to fail is going to be crucial in your development and whatever skill set you're trying to acquire. So I practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for a living. If I only do the things that I'm really good at, then I never stretch myself and grow as a grappler. And listen, you're going to make tons of mistakes in your personal life, in your business life, in your athletic endeavors. You need those moments. You want to stretch yourself into places of discomfort and learn to get really comfortable and pleased in the moments of discomfort. And eventually, you're going to find that that is the place where you find the most comfort is in the uncomfortable. And that's what's going to set you apart from your peers. So whatever it is that you're working on today, make a mistake. Strive for greatness and fail. And this will lead you to the greatness that you ultimately seek. So I get the whole win or learn thing. It makes sense. But I think a lot of people use it like a participation medal. They kind of use it to soften the blow after they've lost so they don't necessarily have to face their failure. And something I learned from Brandon is that it's important to be honest with yourself and recognize those failures. And you let them hurt, but you don't let them hurt for too long. So you can face that failure head on and see what it has to say. In the next clip, Brandon tells a story. And to be honest, as a white or blue belt or even early days of purple belt, I didn't believe this. I didn't want to believe this. But here it is. I want to share a story with you that will help me illustrate a point, hopefully. So... Uh, I had a super fight in Atlanta, a super fight. I was a, like a made grappling match. We're playing for like 500 bucks. You know, it's not a ton of money, but especially at the time, that was a lot of money to me. And um, we're getting ready, my wife and I and our family, to move into a new house that, um, you know, she grew up in. We're remodeling it, and she had to stay behind. I normally like for her to come with me, but we had some work to do at the house that needed to be done, and so she stayed behind. had some stuff that had to be cleaned up. And so I drove to Atlanta, did really well, uh, but I did not win the match, I lost. And I was heartbroken, man, like I was just torn apart. I hate losing, especially at the time, I really hated losing. And so I didn't even wanna talk to her on the phone, like I'm probably on the verge of tears and I just don't wanna talk to her. So I sent her, but I did wanna communicate with her. I sent her a text and I said, listen, Lindsay, I lost my match. I'm really sorry I let you and the kids down. Um, I'll be home tomorrow, something like that. And she sent me a text back right away, and it said, I found a dead squirrel in my brother's closet. (laughs) So my point is, my wife, my own loving wife, who we have the happiest marriage, the best relationship in the world, she didn't care if I won or lost. She just loved me the same, whether I won, whether I lost, whether I didn't compete at all. And my point to you is, nobody cares if you win or lose. Your success and your worth and your value as a human does not rest on whether or not you win the white belt state championship. It doesn't. Nobody cares. What we do care about is you. I don't love the gold medals. I don't love the silver medals. I love my students. I don't love the gold medals. I don't love the silver medals. I love you. So don't hang your worth as a person or as a grappler or define your jujitsu journey based on victories in a tournament that nobody cares about except you. So now that having been said, I want you to try your best. I want you to win. We'll be happy for you if you win. But at the end of the day, we're going to go out to Chipotle and have a meal regardless of whether or not you win or lose. So nobody cares if you win, guys. That's the point of the day, and I hope maybe that the message got home. See ya. Especially in my white and blue belt days, I definitely felt like my tournament results were much more important than they actually were. But it turns out 
no matter how nice that heel hook or guillotine finish was, no one cares about your random win in some random grappling tournament in some random basketball hall. Win or lose, we booze. That's a quote from Sean Applegate. And even if you're not into booze, I think it's a really important thing to note because after every tournament I've been to, when I've had my team around me, regardless of whether I won or lost or whether some of those guys won or lost, we still go out for food afterwards. We're still eating pizza or burgers or donuts or something like that afterwards. Not everyone is going home feeling like a champion. But everyone feels pretty good while they're eating those donuts. Just saying. Whatever impossible dream you've got in front of you, whatever that goal is that seems so far away right now, you can have that. It's not as impossible as you think it is. But it is impossible if you never start. So whatever it is that you're trying to grab, stop trying to grab the whole thing at once because that's what's holding you back. And just wake up every day fresh and start again. And every day when you wake up and do it that way, you're gonna start from a place of advancement. You're gonna begin from a new place every day. Like I wanted to be a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Listen, dudes like me aren't typically Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts. And it took me 10 years. But what I did is I just woke up every day and I started fresh with that goal in my mind. And man, some days it was easy to do that. Some days it felt impossible. But I just had to wake up and start. And if I could just get moving, then I could do it. And again, it took me 10 years, but here I am, right? And I grabbed that goal. I didn't try to become a black belt overnight. I didn't try to become a black belt in a weekend. I tried to become a black belt one day at a time. I just had to get started and you can have that. We live in amazing times. Whatever information it is that you need access to, you have access to it. Whatever encouraging people that you need in your life to tell you that you can, you have access to those people. You can surround yourself with the kind of people that you need in your life. You can surround yourself with the information that you need in your life and you can acquire whatever skill set it is that you need to accomplish that goal. But you have to get started. And unless you do, the impossible will stay impossible. But I'm telling you, and I believe with all my heart, that the impossible is possible. You can do it. Just get started. At one point, when I was an excited white belt who was just introduced to 10 Planet, guys like Brandon and a few other people were like jiu-jitsu celebrities to me. So... To go from being the excited white belt, sending a random dumb white belt question to Brandon, and him actually taking the time to answer me years ago, to now being in Brandon's gym, and training every day, and being with his team, and being on the mat space that I have watched in videos for years, that's surreal to me. That, at one point, was a dream, and here we are. There was a time when it seemed impossible, and now I'm here. I wanted to tell you a quick story. This was told to me by a really important person in my life. A guy named Stanley Johnson told me this a long, long time ago, and I love this story. So there was this great Spanish conquistador. Uh, I think it was Cortez. Uh, Don't yell at me if that's wrong. Uh, I don't know if the story is true either, but here we go. Cortez wants the Aztec city of gold and he's coming for it. So he loads up all these boats with his guys and they make it over to the Americas and they're ready for war, man. They jump off the boats and they start going up the beach. Here they come. They get deep into the beach and onto the land and they start to see the Aztec warriors now. And there's a problem because these dudes are for real ready for war. And there's a lot of them. And the men start to get nervous. They see the blood and the lust in these guys' eyes. And they're not going to give this up too easy. The men start to get really nervous. Cortez senses this in his men. He knows what's going on. He turns around and he looks at him and he said, Gentlemen, today we fight and win or we die. And he turns to his leaders and he says, Burn the boats. They were there, left on the beach in a foreign place. To either win or die. Full commitment. They had no choice. And I love that story. 
That's what it's going to take for you to accomplish whatever goal or dream that you have set. You're going to have to burn the boats. You're going to have to give full and total commitment to the accomplishment of that goal and to the accomplishment of that dream. Because without that, you'll never truly be able to say that you tried. So I encourage you today, burn the boats. Whatever it is that's in your way, whatever your contingency plan is, it's got to go. It's either win or die. And you will fight and you will lose things that are important to you. But you will win in the long run with full and total commitment. Three years ago, when this video was originally uploaded, I was working at a job in retail, which I hated. And depending on how long you've been at a job in Ireland, I don't know what way it is over here, you've got to give a certain amount of notice before you leave that job. So for me, I was there long enough where I had to give two weeks notice. So I heard this video and I hated this job. I hated how it was interfering with my training. It was getting, it was stopping me from getting the MMA and jiu-jitsu training that I was doing at the time. So I heard this story, went to the printer in my job, Grabbed a piece of paper and wrote my notice out. Basically a more polite version of thanks for the cheese. Goodbye. And I'm not suggesting everyone takes the same path that I did. But I thought it would be good to share that story. Because if I didn't listen to that a few years ago. Maybe I'd still be in Ireland working in retail at a job that I hated. Instead of being on this microphone talking to all you lovely folk. While wearing... <laughs> some really comfortable personalized customized handmade leather flip-flops from toe hold you also have a chance to win a pair of these unbelievable flip-flops all you have to do is screenshot the podcast on whatever platform you're listening to it on spreaker stitcher itunes whatever whatever it might be screenshot it Put it in your Instagram story and tag at toe underscore hold. That's at toe underscore H-O-L-D. And tag at BrandonMC.Ninja for a chance to win a pair of free letter flip-flops. If for some reason, let's say you're listening and you're in rainy Ireland. Or maybe you're just living somewhere where it snows all the time. It's cold. You don't want to wear flip-flops. Don't be so selfish. Do it anyway and send me your flip-flops. And in the meantime, you can DM Toehold. Tell them that you heard about them on our podcast. And they might give you a discount on some of their other gear. They also do t-shirts. They do hats. Check out their site. Check out their Instagram. Goodbye. Peace.